Hey everybody, it's Scott Bach Hansen. It is Wednesday and it is January 19th and I am so excited to be here with you and be part of this weekly check-in series that we have called Real Talk here at Herning United Methodist Church. I am excited about where we are and this, this sermon series that's coming up. Got to tell you, a little nervous and a little uh, anxious about what's going on uh, here in front of me. This is day one of the spring semester at Wesley Theological Seminary. And so this is just to give you a little sample of the kind of reading that a student must do during the semester and write papers on and just be part of that faith community. So um, the four classes I'm taking this spring are going to be definitely challenging, but I look at them as an opportunity for, for me to grow. And so I started thinking about the sermon series. And so uh, Joe gave a great message this past week on fear of the other. And then uh, Pastor Jonathan's going to talk about uh, you know, fear of failure this coming weekend. And so, uh, and also as a reminder, we are going to continue on with our one blended service at 10 a.m. for the next two weeks uh, until we get this Omicron variant down into a more manageable space where we feel better. And then we're going to evaluate potentially going to uh, a multiple service uh, opportunity when February hits. So how does all this tie in with the fear of failure? Well, you know, first of all, when you when you go through life, you're going to have opportunities where you're going to fail. And so I think of some of the greatest people, some of the greatest, uh, you know, athletes and and leaders and just people that have been involved and in how they've had so much success. But they didn't get there just by rolling out of bed and having success. Michael Jordan great example was cut from his high school basketball team is now known as the greatest basketball player in the world. Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote so many scripts that were declined over the years until he finally broke through with Hamilton and in the Heights. And it's just a, a, a wonderful, wonderful example of what it looks like to, to be able to overcome obstacles. I think of Tiger Woods and I think of, uh, you know, other great, writers and theologians and I think of Martin Luther who got to tell you not my favorite book but a good one there are so many people that are examples of having failure in their lives and what they were able to do was realize that when they fail that door may close but another door will open one of the things that I share with people is my own situation I was Moved to Greenville, South Carolina. My wife and I and, and our two daughters at the time, we, we agreed to move down to Greenville and take this opportunity to run these South Carolina operations for a global Fortune 500 company. And they gave us some, some checklists that I had to hit, and we exceeded all of them. And we were talking about all these opportunities and potential promotions that I was going to be lined up for. And instead, I got a severance package. Hmm. That wasn't really what I was planning. Uh, so I found myself in a situation where thinking, to, what did I do? What did I do wrong here? Like, is there something I could have done better? Like, why did we fail at this when we hit all the marks they asked us to hit? And sometimes things happen that you just don't understand or, or appreciate or really understand, and especially the corporate world. So that was a, that was a big that was a big uh, punch to the gut, if you will. So then I started thinking, well, what else could I possibly do? Got involved with uh, working for engineering firms and things went well. And all of a sudden the pandemic hit and the company said, we're shutting down U.S. operations and we're cutting all U.S. staff effective immediately. Oh, <laughs> wow. So here's a, a, another door that's now shut. What's next for me? And so that's when I made the decision to follow through on a, a plan that I had made with my former uh, mentor and friend, Ken Jackson, may he rest in peace. He was also the former youth director here at Herndon United Methodist. Wow, what a small world. And so when I was looking at all these different things that I would have to go through to, to be involved and get my master's of divinity, I realized that it was gonna be a challenge. And it's not a sprint. It's not a sprint. It, this is, I can't roll out of bed and just start 
passing tests and writing papers and exams without being able to go through all of this material and be able to sit through lectures and be able to write papers and be able to to just work in small groups and understand how certain things that, you know that you learn in ministry work and so I realized that I needed to have endurance and that kind of endurance was going to be something that was going to be really really important for us to to have success and so when I think about those things I kind of went back to my my old days of being in high school I was uh, fortunate enough to play goalkeeper in soccer I played on three straight uh, state championship uh, teams uh, and I was all state my junior year and I remember when we first got to off-season training and conditioning the coach told us you have to run a mile in under seven minutes and if you don't run it in under seven minutes you get a week and then you have to you know you have to do it in under eight minutes and then if you don't do that you're cut and so I remember the first year that eight minute number, you know, cause I missed it the first time. I think the first time I ran, it was like nine minutes and 15 seconds. And then the second time I ran it, I ran it like seven fifty nine, and like barely made it. And by the time I got to my junior year, I, would, I said, I'm not going to mess with that. I ran it in under six minutes. I ran a, a five fifty seven mile, um, something that I couldn't probably Ride, drive my car right now in under six minutes. Um, that was, you know, a long time ago. I still had hair and abs back then. I digress. I think it's important, though, to, to share the message of that fear of failure can drive us. And, and it can cause us to realize and do remarkable things and to be able to grow and be able to, to advance and be able to push ourselves and test ourselves and realize that you know, in life, we're going to fail. Michael Jordan, Lin-Manuel Miranda, just to name a couple. However, every time the, the door closes, another door opens. And it's, there's an old saying, it's not, it's not how many times you get knocked down. It's how many times you can get back up from being knocked down. Life is going to knock us on our butts sometimes. And it's tough. It's not easy. A lot of us are going through difficult times. We're hurting from, we live in this sandwich generation where we have to take care of our kids and also our parents. We have a lot of grandparents in our community that haven't seen their, their children or grandchildren in a long time because of this crazy pandemic and it's really tough on all of us emotionally and it's, you know, some, we hate technology and being on zoom all the time, but you know what? Thank goodness we have technology and things like zoom so that we can still have some type of interaction. So I want to end with this. Pastor Jonathan's going to be sharing this great message on fear of failure, but really it's also about endurance. It's about being able to, to withstand the tests that are thrown in front of us, to withstand failure, to withstand getting knocked down, but getting back up. Continuously knocked down and getting back up. That's that's what life's about. And look, sometimes we need help. We need help. We need help from, from our friends, from our family members, from our faith, from our pastors. You know, I'm here to tell you the staff of this church loves you and we're here to to help pick you up and brush you off and pray with you and do everything we can. So as I get ready to go through this amazing mountain of books and go through this next semester in these four classes, I want to share this. It's not a sprint. We got to have endurance. We're going to fail from time to time. Windows and doors will shut, but other ones will open. And with that, we'll be able to succeed. So, again, this Sunday, 10 o'clock, of one blended service, Pastor Jonathan, on hope over fear and the fear of failure. And we're really going to focus on just having the endurance to, to continue on with this, this crazy race that we call life. 
So, with that, I'd like to ask if I can pray for you. Gracious Lord, I ask that you be with these wonderful people of this faith community at Herndon United Methodist Church. Please continue to provide for them. Please let them know that sometimes in life we're we're going to struggle. We're going to we're going to get knocked down. And it's okay. We get back up and we go after it. Lord, please be with us. Please bless our efforts and continue to strengthen us and strengthen our relationship with you. Help us to finish this race. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. My friends, be blessed this week.